Welcome to yet another edition of NASCOM Tech Talks. The world has witnessed India's massive transformation over the last several years, driven by the digital revolution at the core of its economic growth, with a vision to make India into a digitally empowered society and a knowledge economy. India is leapfrogging from offline informal low productivity to a single online formal high productivity mega economy. The foundation of this digital revolution has been strengthened by the digital public infrastructure DPIs or India stack enhancing the ability of the country to use digital technologies at a population scale to change the society. DPIs form the cornerstone to shape this decade and ultimately drive the India at 2047 vision. Earlier this year, NASCOM, in partnership with Arthur De Little, launched a report titled Digital Public Infrastructure of India, Accelerating India's Digital Inclusion, which is a first-of-its-kind report providing a holistic view of the Indian DPI ecosystem, analyzing the past, present, and the future impact of these DPIs. We found that mature digital entities such as Aadhaar, UPI, Fastag are estimated to have enabled value creation to the tune of 0.9% to India's GDP in 2022. Apart from economic value add, DPIs also contribute to financial benefits, ecological benefits, process efficiencies and conveniences for the citizens. Further, over 30 countries are either adopting or are in an early discussion stages to implement Indian DPIs to solve similar social and economic challenges. By 2030, we estimate that economic value add from DPIs has the potential to increase 3x from the current 0.9% to 2.9 to 4.2%, driven by evolution of existing digital entities to deliver superior user experiences, utilizing new age tech and enhanced impact of budding DPIs such as ABDM, ONDC, etc. On that note, I take immense pleasure in inviting Siddharth Sharma, Head of IT Operations, Digiatra Foundation. Now, Digiatra is one of the aforementioned budding DPIs that we believe will create massive impact in the future. And let us hear it from Siddharth on what it would achieve. Siddharth, welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Siddharth, you have spent a considerable amount of time uh, in the enterprise IT sector before joining Digiatra Foundation. Um, do introduce yourself for the audience, Siddharth, and what really inspired you to join Digiatra? So, thanks for this opportunity and uh, for this conversation today. Uh, I, I have spent, spent around a, more than a decade in the aviation space prior to join, getting associated with Digi Yatra and uh, all have been in the aviation space, wherein uh, I was part in, of a team, leading a team in the uh, startup ecosystem in Bangalore, wherein I was, uh, we were building a product for pricing decision support system for airlines. And then uh, prior to that, I was with an IT technologies, again in the aviation vertical, and with Sonata software, again in aviation vertical. So, so spent considerable time on the airline side, and uh, somewhere around in 2021, I got an opportunity to get associated with uh, uh, GMR Group, wherein the initiative of Digiatra was being rolled out across all the GMR Group airports, and uh, that was given us an opportunity to um, lead the product project to for the uh, rollout of Digiatra at Delhi, Hyderabad, then Goa airports. And that is how my journey with Digiatra started. Uh, spent around two years in rolling out Digiatra at uh, Delhi and Hyderabad. And when, uh, when the team was getting formed uh, for Digiatra Foundation as a separate entity in somewhere around in 2023 post launch, uh, got an opportunity to get associated with the foundation itself as the technology operation said and uh, I had no second thoughts about it because uh, whatever experience I had while rolling out Digi Yatra at uh, uh, Delhi airport interacting with the passengers during the early days of the app or uh, the direct consumers getting them onboarded to the app so the, 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 the impact the app is going to create and the, pass the, the smiles on the passenger faces when they were using the technology during the soft launch days was something which made it very clear like this this is an initiative to get associated with and contribute more towards it so yeah, yeah. absolutely i mean in fact when i first use uh, the digiatra app i was really stunned that this is coming from our own country and i think we are, that's a very good example of how we've leapfrogged in this last decade uh, uh, when it comes to technology and, and I think from a background perspective, you had um, um, the airline background, you had the IT infrastructure background. I think this was kind of made for you, this role. <laughs> uh, but, but going forward, Siddharth, can you elaborate on the overall origin, inspiration behind how Digiatra was created? What was the vision behind it? 
So a vision was very simple to streamline the journey of a passenger at the airport from entry till the boarding gate. Mm -hmm. So that that was a simple vision which we all started off with. And uh, during the initial days when uh, Digi Yatra Foundation was part of the core airports, so uh, so let me spend some time explaining how yep. the organization is structured. So the uh, Digi Yatra Foundation is under Ministry of Civil Aviation, mm -hmm. and the board members of Digi Yatra Foundation are all the airports of India. So primarily all the leading airports. So 26% stake is with the Airport Authority of India and the remaining is shared among the five private airports. Mm -hmm. So a technical working committee was formed during the initial days who started off with this vision as we just spoke about how to streamline this journey, how to make it paperless, contactless, so that passenger just walks through seamlessly. A uh, lot of POCs and trials were being done during the initial days to try different things and uh, uh, a lot of integrations are required with the airline systems right. to make the system functional, right? So uh, somewhere around in August 2022, when uh, after a lot of trials, when we realized uh, the way to go, because of the privacy of the data concerns and other concerns, the approach sought out was that there will not be any central storage of the data. Right. And that was one of the toughest challenge to work upon while creating a solution which requires seamless data exchange among various entities. While all the uh, past solutions, when you look at it, uh, uh, whenever there is an access required or wherever you have to prove your identity, there are central storages involved. Right. So, uh, so without doing this solution as a central storage and still being able to do that was the core challenge. Mm -hmm. And now uh, using self-sovereign self identity and decentralized ID, mm -hmm. we were able to achieve this. Right. Wherein there is no central storage of the data, everything is stored on user's mobile and with the consent user is sharing with the e ecosystem. In this case, here is the airports. So. Yeah, so the vision being this, when uh, 2022 it was launched, the app approach was launched and uh, the trials were being done. And when we saw this vision coming to reality with some of the passengers and one of the examples which I love quoting about is, is, is a 60-year-old 60, 60 uh, gentleman. He walked up to me and asked me, like, I want to register for the app. And uh, what is this? Uh, how does it work? He, he was very curious to know. To my surprise, this was the last persona which we had thought about that they will be using this app. And today, you, be, uh, you won't believe there are many such users of that age group or across all age groups, across all uh, segments of the society who are using this app. Uh, so, so again, coming back to the story, so he walked up to me and asked, we register, I registered him. It took around two, three minutes to register on the app and then uh, sharing the data with the origin airport, which in this case was Delhi. And then I told him that, now you just walk through the gate. Yeah. So he was very uh, suspicious and skeptical mm -hmm. about it. Like, will it work? Will it, like, I will show my face and the gate will open and I'll be able to cross. I said, yes, that, that's what will happen. And so he, I, he walked up to the gate, he scanned the boarding pass, showed his face, and the gate opened. And he crossed the gate, and the moment he crossed the gate, the words from, his, uh, from him were, Kamal ho gaya, maza ha gaya. <laughs> it's magical. So, he, so, so these are the kind of stories. And then, the, and then when you were seeing those, some, some of the kids trying to do it, and they're fiddling with the e-gates and all, and then they are seeing the gate opens and they cross. So, so all these uh, actually uh, were true, and that's what the vision were. And then when we saw it happening and realizing in reality, there were a lot of hit and trials. Were be, uh, there were a lot of uh, hit and trials and uh, scenarios which were getting sorted out during those days also. Because between August and December, when the actual launch happened, there were a lot of uh, fine tuning of the application and other things was done. But yeah, so that that was the vision, and we realized it in in the most privacy preserving manner, uh, which is uh, there is no data with any of the partners in the ecosystem. Sure. I think that's a great story uh, and a use case for uh, you know, using Dijayatra. Um, and, and when we're talking about KPIs, right? I mean, where are we in this journey today? I mean, what have we achieved up till now, um, you know, in terms of reach, impact, you know, KPIs? What are the things that you think that are milestones that you have actually covered in this okay. journey in the last two years? Oh, so, yeah, good, good question. So, uh, it got launched in, so 15 months to say, it's not yet two years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, got launched in December 2022 officially uh, at uh, three airports, mm -hmm. uh, Delhi, Bangalore and Varanasi. From there, the journey now today stands at 14 airports. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, there will be 14 more airports coming soon to the ecosystem, so which will take the count to 28. Mm -hmm. uh, so in terms of the growth at the airports, yes, we have consistent growth, uh, which uh, obviously is also reflected in the numbers. So the app has been downloaded 4.5 million times wow. across the, both the stores, Play Store and uh, App Store. And to our surprise, the App Store and Play Store percentages are almost the same. When we started off, we thought Android users will be more, but here this is one of the unique apps where you have more iOS users and it has to do with the air travel also maybe. Yeah, yeah. I mean the economic, uh, yes, yeah, I mean yes. so. Yeah, that's so, so that's the other one and the app has been used 19.5 or around 19 million times across all these touch points across all these airports. Now why I'm saying this that the app has been used these many number of times because I will not be able to give a KPI wherein how many unique users have used it because there is as as coming back to the original there is no central storage of the data we don't right. know uh, how many times Siddharth had taken a flight from any particular airport so yeah so the app usage is in terms of how many times it has been utilized yeah and you see if you do the airport. basic math 4 and 19 so almost 5 times each person has kind of <laughs> used roughly so I think roughly, that's a good yeah. uh, use case for this correct so uh, again, let me. Uh, the other thing which we had in mind uh, in terms of the KPI and uh, was uh, uh, the data privacy thing itself, right? So is is uh, are we able to push through this message of that, that the app is the most secure uh, approach right. of using uh, any of the ID provide ID which is sure. there? We are coming to that so, question on. And I think it's it's a very young app, right? Less than two years old, yeah. you say 15 months. Uh, uh, but because it's used so frequently, right, everywhere, um, I'm sure you would have faced some challenges, some usage mm -hmm. challenges. Uh, so how did you basically, what are the challenges you faced and how did you surmount them? Perfect. Good, good question. Again, uh, the challenges because, yeah, so any data related solutions these days, one of the <laughs> biggest challenges is privacy. Exactly. Everybody thinks that any solution which is getting built with your biometrics or your uh, Aadhaar data or any such data which we are taking will have a central storage and uh, w without which it is not possible to validate and to do the use cases. However, that's not true in case of Digi Yatra and that's one of the toughest challenge which till date that's one of the toughest challenge. A lot of learning is to be uh, learning exercises mm. have to be done with the users to explain this whole concept of decentralized IDs and mm. how does it work and uh, uh, the, the use cases can be achieved without having the, any data in our system. Uh, so I'll, I'll maybe spend some time explaining the whole how does it work in interest of everyone. Mm -hmm. So and I'll again want to quote an example uh, from our earlier days. If you remember in your olden days you would have definitely taken a Xerox copy and got it stamped with a guested officer and then given it to an entity who wants to accept it, right? So here the circle of trust was being built between those three entities, the user, the entity who is going to accept the ID and then also uh, the, the guested officer who stamped it. So similar concept is at work here as well. So on one side is the passenger or the user and uh, the other side is the airport or the verifier who verifies your ID and in center is the Digiatra Foundation. Now what Digiatra Foundation has achieved is it, it's not your another just another travel app it is a digital wallet which actually stores like your Xerox copy which can be one copy but however it, it, your digital wallet stores something called verified credential and this verified credential is a credential which is Yatra Foundation has stamped for the authenticity once you pull your data from your IDI or Aadhaar system and your selfie is matched while getting onboarded onto the app uh, once the selfie is successfully matched, it sends back to the back uh, blockchain of the Jyotra Foundation where a hash value is created saying that, yeah, it is proof. It is approved by the Jyotra Foundation and a proof value is being sent back to the digital wallet of the user saying that, yeah, whenever you want to share it with some entity who will accept it in future, that will be uh, a validated ID. And the airports are also onboarded onto the ecosystem uh, through a process wherein uh, they are onboarded as a verifier and only the verifier airports can accept the data from the user's mm -hmm. phone when you share your boarding pass. Right. And one, one big uh, test which maybe users can do on their own to realize that the data is nowhere stored 
uh, it's a it, take a uninstall challenge or a delete challenge just uninstall your app you will lose everything which is there mm -hmm. and that is uh, no nothing will be there in your app and that is by design that is not a bug in the system which many people feel it is by design because nothing is stored centrally so even if you log in back you will not get anything back on your phone so yeah so that's one one of the biggest challenge the other challenges were around the integration aspects only which mm -hmm. which still still exists to some extent and we are working with the stakeholders to streamline it further mm -hmm. uh, the data sharing between uh, uh, airlines uh, so here the, there is a con there is a real time check that happens with the airline systems when you scan your boarding pass at the airport so although airport has taken care of that but that's another part which uh, which was not so easy for airports for a seamless journey agree no i think uh, this may be the most used blockchain application in india i guess uh, blockchain involving application in india i guess that is true and some people tell us globally as well people in the hyperledger okay. foundation and elsewhere uh, who who are talking about single sovereign identities or in fact i was one of the summits in iata other day and uh, they also saying that this is one of the use cases in the travel industry which is being talked about a lot uh, as uh, as a good example of iata one id because iata one id is also trying to do something similar of seamless passenger uh, experience across all the touch points at dfp yeah, so, so yes highest use uh, blockchain application in the world that's another plus for digiatra uh, moving on to uh, about the future uh, you know so that what really lies ahead for digiatra what are future plans you know expansions in india are you looking at uh, countries abroad uh, new futures that you think you want to add uh, developing the overall ecosystem i see cabs and hotels also being offered in the current application also but do you see some more expansions happening in the future so uh, anything which is can be which requires an id validations can be added as a use case mm. uh, to this uh, app however we are very co conscious about what features and what new services to be added because mm -hmm. we want to maintain that privacy by design as exactly. a concept exactly so wherever so we 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 have many partners reaching out to us saying that can we collaborate so the first question in the ground principle is that we will not be sharing any data with mm -hmm. the third parties or any other apps True. if it can be done in a data in the privacy preserving manner then uh, the use case is open however yes we are taking it very slow uh, we are expanding in the airport ecosystem for sure so one is definitely the linear growth as many airports as possible in india to first and to cater to those mm -hmm. then uh, within the airport in the travel ecosystem itself international travel international flow is what we are exploring and talking to various entities uh, how do we enable that because uh, everything has to be automated and the data sharing has to happen between various entities so that is the one globally if you want to talk about like first is international travel within india and then if you reach the destination can we streamline those journeys as well once you arrive at the destination with i'll collaborating with the visa authorities and other things so those 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 are the usual use cases which you are exploring at mm -hmm. one of the one which uh, comes to our mind and when ma many of our users talk about is uh, uh, can we streamline hotel check in because the same documents are being involved there and instead of giving my aadhar physical copy i think that's a great uh, use case yeah so in, so anywhere we have when when you are thinking about giving your aadhar copy why give your aadhar copy when exactly. the thing can be done with a zero knowledge proof of the yatra app so those are some thought processes which we have and those uh, as In, with the, with our stakeholders we are discussing those whatever will be relevant one will be picked up and in these lines great good good to see some of these things uh, come together um and and thank you for coming to our studio and sharing this short synopsis about the past present and future of digi yatra sadat thank um, you um viewers you have you have you all downloaded the all new digi yatra app uh, if not please do it right away use digi yatra it makes the airport experience completely frictionless and hassle free the app download link is below in the description box and in case you have not downloaded the nascom report on impact of dpas on india's economy that report link is also below in the description box go check it out and also our other videos on the indian tech sector to receive instant notifications on when we post new videos on our channel be sure to click the bell icon and if you found this video interesting please share it with your friends and colleagues that's all for now and see you soon in the next video Thank you.